Hello, my name is Luis Torres. Um, I'm a TI for about five years, and I wanted to discuss stage two. Um, stage two is where they actually confront you. Um, I'm not 100% sure as how gang stalking does it because I only dealt with gang stalking for maybe about a month or two, like at most, which was the most intense that I've ever felt. But I know with V2K, this is where they stop the subliminal messages and directly start having conversations with you to let you know exactly what you have done wrong or what they didn't like or anything like that. You have to understand that they always point out a problem. It's always a problem that is either in your life that has happened in your life or that, you know, happened in somebody else's life. You know, so this is this at this point, it's an accusation. You're uh, dealing with an accusation, and this accusation is what's the main motive behind your targeting. Um, in a spiritual aspect, this is a detrimental point in your life where, you know, you either cause somebody harm or you influence somebody the wrong way. And these beings or these uh, entities or people whatever they may be, didn't like it. And it became the main source for your um, targeting. Um, they'll have conversations with you and let you know that, you know, this is who I am. They'll let you know. They'll have code names for themselves. They won't directly tell you their names, but they'll, they'll tell you a name that they comfortable with. And if you're smart enough, you'll be able to decipher that and you'll be able to find out who they truly are and as long as you surprise them you know you'll be like well is your name this and is your name that is your name this and as long as you're doing your studies in psychology you'll be able to um decipher their reactions you'll be able to decipher their responses so you'll be able to find out a little bit about them but it takes time and it takes a lot of hard work um, the study of a human behavior is very hard. Uh, you have to study more than one person in order to sit there and create a percentage of what a person would do or what a person wouldn't do. However, you need to be able to study your your operators individually because usually it's more than one operator. Um, as far as gang stalking, um, that that just means that they don't want to, if they don't confront you about it, they'll do it in a subliminal way, but it'll be more intense. Everybody will be talking about this. They want to make sure that you don't forget what they're talking about. So you have to be able to open your mind and say, well, you know, if I did this, you know, or you can tell them, show me. And they'll give you visions. They'll inject these visions into your head uh, or memories. I, I, some I, at first I was saying that it was visions, but I realized that you know after I stopped hiding myself from these people, I started realizing that they have total access to your uh, memories. So they're capable of taking you back in time into that moment where you actually done something wrong. Now um, I don't suggest this for anybody who's going through gang stalking. But if you're ready for it, if you feel as though you're ready for the next level to communicate with these uh, entities or beings and find out what's really going on, just know that they, you know, gang stalking is just a minute part of it. While you're being gang stalked, they are monitoring your, your, your neural activity so they can hear what you hear, see what you see and feel feel what you feel, inject thoughts and all, all kinds of this stuff. So while you're going through gang stalking, you're still capable of talking to these people, even though they're not around you. You can talk to them, you know, through your mind, which is, you know, telepathic communication. And by doing so, it's just like when you're reading a book. I said this in the last video, it's just like when you're reading a book, you use that inner voice or you can even speak out loud. But in order for people not to think that you're crazy, I would say use your inner voice. Now, um, keep antagonizing them and say, I, I know that you're there. You know, I, I want to talk to you. I want to find out what's going on. And you could trigger, you could just possibly trigger a telepathic communication with the gang stalkers in order to find out what's going on. However, I don't recommend this because if you're not ready for V2K or telepathic communication, then you just might have just bumped the, the bees nest and stirred up the storm. So 
you know, you have to be very careful. But if you're ready and when you're ready, you can communicate with these people. And this is the confrontation. Now, the confrontation is what well, we don't like this. And, you know, they might not even be so upfront about it. They'll just be like, well, you did this. You know, my voice is after a while broke down and started letting me know or my operators because I hate to say voices because it makes me sound schizophrenic and I'm not schizophrenic but my operators or these entities you know they started expanding their answers it went from all right well you did this to you did this and I don't like this because this and this and this or you know if I've ever offended a man in any way or a woman they would say well you offended this woman and this is why I feel offended by the way that you offended this woman so they they make it a personal a personal vendetta against you that you have actually caused some kind of discomfort in somebody's life. So they want to they want to punish you for it. You know, this is how they do things. This is the way that that they police. This is a new way of policing that they're that they're doing against us. So they want to fix something, but they don't want to fix it unless you're capable of fixing it yourself and you're willing to fix it yourself. So you have to put in the footwork. You know, you have to sit there and learn how to. Well, listen, I apologize. And they won't go for I'm sorry in the beginning because, you know, at, at the beginning stages, you know, they'll sit there and say, well, you're only saying sorry because we're doing this. So you have to be able to say, well, I want to fix this because you genuinely want to fix this. Not because you hear voices, but because you genuinely want to fix this. And in order to fix this, you have to be able to find a problem. And, the, you know, in the beginning, stage one is where people don't know what's going on. Because, you know, it's like somebody is attacking you and you don't know what actually what's going on with with what's going on. So you're hearing these sounds, you're, you're you know, you're you're seeing these visions or, or, you know, you're experiencing these emotions or feelings or scenarios, but you have no idea what's going on. So that's where they, they, you know, isolate you. So that way they can communicate you with the most. So that way you can truly find out, but they won't make it easy. You know, you have to put in the footwork. You have to ask questions. Well, why am I here? And sometimes it'll be a spiritual answer. You know, um, my girlfriend, she's a targeted individual. She's been a targeted individual for about seven to eight months now. And they told her, well, listen, you know, you came from heaven. You 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 came from heaven. You left heaven to come to earth. And we don't want you on earth because they sit there and say, well, we're we're trespassers. So everybody that's a targeted individual is a trespasser against these entities or these people, operators, whatever it is that they may be. You know, you're stepping in their territory and um, the reason why they want to isolate you so much is to communicate with you and to keep you from interacting with any kind of social like behavior with anybody because they feel as though you're not worthy or you're you haven't earned your right to be a part of society. So they want to separate you from society. It's like living in hell where you're totally separated. Your your parents aren't your parents. Your children aren't your children. Your friends aren't your friends because everybody's acting erratic. You know, I've had a combination of V2K gang stalking and do weapons all at one time. So I've had all three. It wasn't all consistent. I hear the V2K or the voices or these operators the most more than I do gang stalking. But once I've experienced gang stalking, gang stalking is an ongoing process. And even though it might not be out and open, gang stalking is a process that affects everybody every day. So whenever there's an argument in a house, all of that is part of the gang stalking that, you know, they're targeting other people in your household in order to get them to look at you differently or manipulate their brain patterns in order to look at you differently. This is how people think that they're recruiting people, but it's not. It's all mind manipulation where they try to use the people around them because they sit there and see that these people are capable of being used and being used unaware. So they don't know that they're being used. A lot of the people don't know that they're being used. A lot of the people don't know why they're following you. They're just following you off of either instinct, thought, because they injected a thought into them. So, you know, the confrontation of, of everything is where you have to 
you know, open your mind up and see where you did wrong. You know, it's like the 12 steps for Alcoholics Anonymous or, or a Drug Anonymous or anything like that. You have to understand that there is an inventory that you have to do in order to make things right. You have to not please them, but show them that you're capable of rising above the initial confrontation because the initial confrontation is what got you into the program or into the situation that you're in now, you know. So as far as as do weapons, you have to communicate. You have to find a way to communicate with these beings and they won't stop. It, it, they'll lessen up. They'll lessen up or, you know, they'll change their tactics from aggressive to passive aggressive. But in order to do that, you have to be able to open your mind up to understand that, man, I might have done something to, to, to deserve this, you know. And a lot of people say, well, they haven't done nothing. But if you look at Jesus, Jesus ain't do nothing and he got punished. So, you know, they saw a problem with Jesus that, you know, I, I, I hate to go into religion because a lot, there's so many religions and not every audience member that's watching this video is, you know, believes in Jesus or believes in a prophet Muhammad or anything like that. But what I'm trying to say is that innocent people get attacked too because of a reason. Either you're a threat to them you know, you have shown them some way that you are a threat to them and they want to stop that. So you have to open your mind up and say to yourself, all right, well, they're confronting me about this. So how can I change either myself, the situation or change the way that they're thinking in order to stop or in order to lessen the attacks that you're going through? Because it's all part of empathy, empathy and sympathy. You know, you have to be empathic to these beings because these beings don't want to do this. If they're human, no human wants to do this unless you're a total psychopath and you actually enjoy hurting somebody. It's not human nature to enjoy hurting somebody. Usually when you hurt somebody, you end up, you know, feeling bad and want to apologize. So these voices, these tar these targetees, I mean, not targetees, these operators, they're they're going to let you know that you did something wrong and they'll let you know why you did something wrong. Now, the what I'm trying to get across is that you have to get your point across that you want to fix this. You want to fix this somehow. And by you opening yourself up to to apologizing, to making yourself a better person, you know, you'll elevate yourself to a higher existence or to a higher plane. You know, you vibrate differently because I know that a lot of the comments lately have been talking about vibration. But in order to elevate your your vibrations, you have to be willing to to either forgive, forget or be forgiven, you know, so that way you can start a whole clean slate. And that's what these beings want you to do to start a clean slate, to live a righteous life. So and they're going to force you to do that. And the, their tactics are vicious. But it's it's effective, you know, it's effective towards me. I've changed my life. I mean, I've I don't do some of the things that I used to do anymore. I don't do any of the things that I'm very antisocial because I know that a lot of the people are part of the program. So I try to stick to targeted individuals. I try to talk to targeted individuals because it's harder to manipulate a target once they're already a target, because once they don't once you're not a target, you you. You can be manipulated and not know that you're being manipulated. But once you're conversating with these people, once you're seeing these people, it's hard to manipulate you because you are already aware to it. So it makes it difficult. So as far as the confrontation, I think, you know, from my personal experience, I think that you have to open your mind up that not every thought that they inject in your mind is false because only you know what's real and what's not. So I think that you should be a better person and try to find out, be that detective and find out what's going on and how you can fix it. Don't become aggressive because when you become aggressive, you'll make people uncomfortable. You'll go to jail. You'll do all these things. But stage three, you know, we'll go into that more detailed in the next video. But stage two is the confrontation. That's when they'll, that's when you'll have an understanding of, all right, well, this is what they're saying, whether it's true or not. But you know, they're not going to lie to you. They're going to tell you exactly what's on your mind, what's on their mind and why you're in the program. It's up to you whether you accept it, believe it or not, you know. Um, so with with saying that, you know, take 
take the time to start doing some studies to make yourself prepared for this conversation that you're going to have because you're going to have a very long conversation because it's 24 7 v2k so um in saying that look forward to the next video i'll post it tomorrow S subscribe if you actually want to hear this if you don't then that's fine this is all for targeted individuals all right you guys have a great day